Welcome uh, everyone to today's uh, webinar, how to turbocharge your SCCM. Um, I will mention that we are a couple of minutes after the hour, so uh, hopefully everyone has been able to log in at the moment. Uh, main focus today is to show you how to extract more value from your SCCM investment. Uh, it is not a replacement to SCCM at all, so there is no need for additional infrastructure. My name is uh, Johan Samberg. And I will be joined shortly by Dean Bates, who will be presenting during this webinar. A couple of household uh, housekeeping items to start with. The duration is approximately 30 minutes. Uh, I want to mention your microphones are not working, but that you can submit questions during the session. And we will try to answer as many as we can at the end. So before we start, I'd like to say a few words to introduce Vector Networks and uh, where we come from. So first, uh, Vector has over 20 years of experience in developing IT management products. Uh, the webinar today is general, uh, of course, about turbocharging SCCM, but we will show some examples from our Visor Suite. Uh, so Visor Suite today uh, includes software and license management and asset management, and this is specifically related to SCCM, of course. Uh, we also have Service Desk and PC Duo, which is an enterprise remote control tool. Uh, over the years, um, we have a bunch of clients, and I will show you a few examples here of uh, some references. Uh, they are uh, private and public across the United States. Uh, we're also in Canada and in Europe, and uh, as well in Asia. Uh, any organization with an IT department is really our type of customer. Final slide before we start the demo. Uh, is to uh, say that we're very proud to have received various innovation awards, including this one from Infotech Group. Uh, typically, Vector Score is very high in terms of innovation and comprehensive product features. So that was it, a uh, very brief background, but now I will hand over to Dean Bates to start the presentation, and I will be back at the end for the Q&A session. Enjoy the uh, webinar. Okay, so yeah, as Joe mentioned, this webinar is based on how you can extract uh, more value out of your existing SCCM uh, infrastructure, so the existing servers, all of those agents which are deployed um, using the Visor tool. So the first way you can extract uh, more value is um, by freeing your data. Uh, SCCM collects vast amounts of data um, regarding the IT infrastructure within your organization. However, this data is generally just used by IT departments. Um, by using the Visor tool, then you're enabled to share this data amongst other departments which are associated with IT processes. Um, so, for example, um, department managers who may be requesting devices or software for their employees, um, security compliance officers who would be involved in any um, um, issues where you're going out of compliance or data breaches within the organization, and obviously finance and procurement who are involved in um, the procurement of assets um, for your organization. So, how does this look within the Visor tool? Well, the Visor tool is web-based, so it's highly distributable and people can easily log into the tool. And when they log in, then they're presented with a um, home page which is um, custom to um, their role. So this um, environment is configured for demonstrations, so we have a few demo users here which show some of the different user types which can consume uh, um, your SCCM data through Visor. So for example, software asset management managers who are interested in uh, software compliance, um, asset managers, whether assets are in um, storage or lost or um, the various life cycle stages of the assets, um, maybe your service desk, um, HR, and as I've mentioned, there's various other logins which we have um, within the Visor system. So I'm just going to log in as a demo IT manager. And we can see an example of one of those um, dashboards which we provide um, to your organization, um, consuming the existing SCCM data. So this is all based on um, data coming from your existing SCCM infrastructure. 
Um, so here we've got a few uh, KPIs regarding assets which are out for repair and in storage and the various different asset types and we can see licenses which are um, about to expire. Um, a user can easily customize their home page um, with uh, KPIs which we have out of the box for various different scenarios. Again, consuming that SCCM data um, but applying management um, processes and logic um, to provide the KPIs. If there's any KPIs, um, as you can see there's lots of KPIs here at the box, but if there's any you need which um, we don't have, then it's very easy um, for you to create them or um, our team can uh, help you do that. Each of the KPIs is drilled down, so if we want to see licenses which are expiring, for example, we can just click on there and drill straight down. However, there is a form notification engine as well, um, so if there's any um, actions, for example, licenses expiring or if assets have been out for repair longer than the SLA you have with the supplier, then we'll send you an email notification, so um, you don't have to rely just on those KPIs. One of the other ways you can extract more value, so turbocharging your uh, SCCM investment, is um, by creating actionable data. So SCCM collects lots of data about um, your IT assets, um, thousands of pieces of data um, for a PC, for example. And what Visor does is turns this raw inventory data into actionable, manageable, manageable data, um, so you can perform IT processes. So um, just to quickly show you how that looks, if we um, go into our asset library, we can see at the uh, top level um, we present asset categories, um, which we call asset types. And you can add your own asset types. And our customers manage all different types of assets um, within the Visor system. Um, assets um, which have been discovered and inventoried via SCCM, um, but also in some cases um, non-discoverable assets, um, such as, for example, um, USB keys. So if I drill down on um, computers, then we can see various different categories of computers uh, coming from SCCM. And if I click on desktop, then we can see a list of our desktop computers. And this is an example of where we're combining raw inventory data from SCCM and uh, manager management data. So details such as the computer name, the model, um, the serial number are coming from SCCM and management data such as the life cycle and when it was purchased are uh, managed within the visor system. This view can be further filtered, um, so for example if you want to see assets which are currently out for repair or purchased this year or where their warranty is about to expire, then we can filter down this view even more. So when I click on an asset, we can see a combination of the management data and the raw data from SCCM. So the management data here is things like identification, the serial number, the asset tag, and the service tag, and the current life cycle stage, and there's processes behind this. So for example, if an asset is lost and an asset belongs to a C-level exec, then we could send an email to the security compliance officer, letting them know that an asset with potentially sensitive data um, has been lost. Other management data includes um, purchasing information, um, which can be entered directly into Visor, or we can integrate with existing purchasing systems like Microsoft Dynamics or uh, um, invoicing systems you might have. Um, so this is um, brought together with the data from SCCM. And we can see an example of some of that data here. So the MAC address is uh, coming straight from the existing SCCM discovery data. And any of the data which is discovered in SCCM can be brought into Visor. You can just select what data you want to see and where you want to see it um, within the system. Um, it's not just hardware data, um, it's also software data um, which we're bringing through. And because all of the data is all in one um, place, 
then it enables us to um, do reports which cut across the uh, management data and data within SCCM. So for example, if you wanted to see all computers which are running Windows 10, which were purchased in the last 12 months from a particular supplier, um, which were approved by um, a particular person within your organization, then you could do that. So when we're creating management data, it's not just for um, hardware assets, um, we also do this for um, software assets as well. So when we're managing software assets in Visor, then what we do first is present a list of uh, normalized applications. Um, so SCCM is going to find um, potentially thousands of applications on your network, um, things like Java updates, um, maybe Acrobat Reader, um, maybe many tools which you don't want to manage from a software asset management um, perspective. Within Visor, we can see all those individual installations here. But at the top level, we give you this normalized view, which is just the applications which you want to manage from a software asset management perspective. So you don't get all of that additional noise um, which, uh, from SCCM, but we do capture the value which allows us to perform actionable manage management tasks. And an example of this is um, our compliance reporting. So we can see a report here where it's showing our um, compliance position um, for the organization and it's just focused on those applications which um, we've uh, um, selected um, for software asset management. So we can see here, for example, um, we have Office um, 2016, we've purchased five licenses, we have uh, nine installed coming from SCCM. We have a license surplus of minus four, so we're non-compliant. And the report tells us that it will cost $552 to become compliant. And this is an example where we're using all of that rich information from SCCM, but combining it with um, your license details and your entitlement to give you a compliance um, position. Okay, so one of the next ways we can extract more value from uh, SCCM is because Visor manages the complete asset lifecycle. SCCM focuses particularly on the maintenance of assets, so uh, updating the configuration, um, managing patch deployments, um, for example. On the software side, then SCCM does a great job of provisioning applications, packaging applications so they're ready to be deployed. However, there's some gaps here. Um, on, with regards to maintenance, then SCCM doesn't easily tell you when um, maintenance contracts are about to expire. And when provisioning software applications, it's not always immediately um, obvious your compliance position um, for um, particular applications. When we combine SCCM with Visor, then we have um, access to the complete asset lifecycle. From a employee or a department manager request, um, through approval and the provisioning aspects, um, all the way to uh, end of life scenarios. Visor can provide end users or department managers with a self-service portal where they can request assets. The portal allows um, people to request software assets and hardware assets and you can filter this um, portal so that um, it only displays assets which are appropriate to the particular user role. So if I go to a computer, then um, as an employee or a department manager, then I could request a um, laptop. When I make the request, then a form appears appropriate to the device I've selected. So in this case, it was a laptop, um, so I can select various different laptop peripherals, so whether I need a laptop bag or uh, um, a particular Wi-Fi card um, for that device. And you can customize the request forms. It's very simple to do. You don't need to be a developer. Um, there's web-based tools for selecting the fields um, for managing a request. Each request goes through multiple layers of um, approval. Um, so for example, um, you may want requests to be managed, um, sorry, approved first by the employee's line manager, 
and then the resource owner, and then maybe then the head of department. All approvals are um, sent um, via email to all necessary approvers. Um, so this is how they appear within the visor system. Um, so we can see here a request for a laptop um, by uh, an employee. And the um, approver can either accept the request or um, decline it. They can provide a reason for um, their action. And right from the request itself, then they can fulfill um, that approval. So in this case, we could select a laptop which we want to allocate to that particular employee. And then Pfizer will um, take the necessary actions, creating a change request or a service desk ticket um, to help provision that laptop to that particular employee. Um, as I mentioned, requests can also be made for software applications. So we can see here where Daniel has requested a Microsoft Project. And in this case, when a approval has been accepted, then we can integrate with SCCM to automate the um, deployment of, in this case, Microsoft Project to Daniel. So Visor manages the request, it manages the approval, and then it passes over the automation of the deployment to SCCM, um, utilizing your existing um, knowledge in packaging applications and um, being able to um, deploy those applications, um, but doing that all automatically um, after an approval. So, one of the other features which Visor um, provides on top of SCCM data is uh, locations. Um, being able to see where your assets are within an organization. So we have a uh, locations view. The locations view can actually represent any hierarchical structure. So it could be business units, divisions, departments, for example. However, a lot of our customers um, tend to use this geographical location structure as we see here. So we can click on a country and then onto a city. We can see the various buildings within that city. And if I click on a building, then we can see the floors and I could click on a floor and see the rooms um, within that floor. If I take it back to a building level, then we can see all the assets which are in that particular building. And assets can either be um, directly allocated to a location or we can automatically allocate assets um, based on their IP address or subnet range, again, coming from that SCCM data. And there's full change history throughout the Visor product. So we can see at a location level um, where any assets are moved in and out of a particular uh, location. Um, in Visor, we make it very easy for um, IT and other departments to see who has um, particular assets. So our employee view uh, can be made available to um, department managers or um, IT. Um, when department managers use this view, then they um, can, can just see all of the employees within their particular um, department. Um, so if I select uh, Daniel, then we see all the assets which have been allocated to um, Daniel. This includes uh, software assets and um, hardware assets. So we can see, for example, USB keys and USB keys which Daniel has lost in the past, and smartphones, and um, software applications. Um, if the asset has an egg timer as, rather than a tick, then it means that that asset has been requested and approved, but the provisioning process for that asset has not completed um, at this time. Um, once it has a tick, then it means that the employee has that um, asset. Within Visor, then it's very easy to allocate a new asset. So if this person, for example, needed a new computer, then we can see um, how many computers we have in stock and add one of the computers. Again, here with data coming from SCCM. If none of the computers we have available are, um, are suitable um, for this particular request, then we can manage the procurement of a new computer within the Visor system. Okay, so that brings us to the end of a um, sort of short demonstration of how you can extract more value from uh, SCCM um, using uh, the Visor system. 
Um, if you'd like some more details, then please go to our website. Um, on the blog, then um, there's quite a lot of additional information on how we do software normalization and um, the asset request portal. If you'd like to try Visor yourself, then we have a special um, URL. If you go to uh, tinyurl.com slash visor demo, then you're able to sign up and use our virtual lab and um, test the Visor system yourself. Um, if you're not following us already, then I suggest you follow us on Twitter, and we also have our email addresses there. So if you have any additional questions, then uh, please feel free to contact myself or Yoan. Um, so with that, I'll just hand uh, back over to Yoan. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I have um, just a couple of follow-up things uh, for questions uh, that uh, a couple of people had submitted. So I'm going to go through those uh, before we end. Uh, first question from uh, Daniel, is it possible in Visor to customize for specific fields or info that we have? Uh, so yes, uh, you can actually change or add or delete any fields or choice list as you wish. So uh, that is a very easy thing to do. Um, second question from Emily, is Visor installed in the cloud or on-premise? So the answer here is that it actually works in both ways. 95% uh, uh, install on-premise, but Vector can also be uh, hosted uh, in the cloud. So that is completely up to you. Uh, in both cases, of course, it will connect to SCCM. And the uh, last question uh, from Jeff, uh, is uh, Visor available for testing on-premise? Uh, and the answer is uh, yes. Uh, uh, actually, you will be contacted by one of our uh, salespeople with more details. Uh, either you do the online evaluation that Dean just mentioned, or we can set up a session for you. So those are the questions uh, for today, uh, but we will reach out if there were any questions we didn't have time for. Uh, for now, we hope you all enjoyed today's webinar and that you got some useful info out of it. Uh, feel free to contact us for any comments, uh, questions, or suggestions. Uh, on behalf of Vector Networks and myself and Dean, thank you everyone for your time and uh, looking forward to uh, speaking to you all at the different uh, occasion. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.